Good morning, YouTubers. Time for more work on the 1932 Ford chassis. What we're going to do today is we're going to start running brake lines uh, and fuel lines. I did manage to acquire the necessary intake fuel pump to replace the, uh, the pickup tubes that are currently in it. Uh, I've acquired a uh, fuel regulator that will reduce the fuel pressure down to 7 pounds so that the carburetor can handle it and the fuel lines and everything. Uh, before we do that though, what I'm going to do is this. Okay, this is the paint gun to my uh, Fuji Systems Mini Mite 4 Platinum painting system, the turbine painting system, which I absolutely love. But what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be making some minor improvements on it today. I'm going to be replacing this cup with this right here. This is the 3M PPS liner system disposable cup system which makes cleanup a lot easier, makes handling the material a lot easier, just makes everything a lot easier. So I'm going to be converting my paint gun over to that and then we will get to work on running fuel lines. Now this right here is the pickup tube uh, for a carbureted system if you have a mechanical fuel pump but as you know I'm putting a 1987 Mustang GT 5.0 in it, which those had electric fuel pumps in them. So I'm going to be swapping this out for an electric internal in-tank in electric fuel pump, which this tank is already set up for that. It's got the internal baffling in the tray and everything. And I'm going to be running fuel lines down this fuel rail, both ascend and return, and I'll be running my brake lines down this fuel rail to meet with the master cylinder that we installed the last time we were in here. As you can see, this is the uh, in-floor Got the uh, master cylinder already mocked up and everything else, so now it's just a matter of running the, the uh, brake lines to the front and back. I may not be able to completely 100% finish this today because I realized yesterday on my way to this location where the car is that uh, I may not have the T-fitting to branch for the front brake lines. That might cause an issue. Uh, I may try to run to the parts store and get those, but I am a little bit far away from the parts store, so we'll just have to see how my mood is and how long this other stuff uh, takes. Unfortunately, on the trip, I forgot the setup for my uh, regular camera that I used to film this, so I'm just gonna give you updates as we go. Stick, stick with us. Okay, while not perfect, I did manage to get a little bit of a setup here with my with my uh, phone here to uh, see if we can get some of this stuff done. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, remove the cup from my paint gun here and try to install the new PPS system. So let's uh, let's get started with that. First thing you have to do, of course, is you have to uh, take loose the uh, check valve, which is easily done. Just simply, it just simply spins right off with the proper wrench, that is. This check valve right here, what that does is that pressurizes this cup and pushes the material in. I will need to use that uh, in some form with this new system. But right now I'm gonna put my cup back together and then remove it using uh, a wrench on this uh, right here. These can be a little bit stubborn, but you can get them off using an 11 16 wrench is what the way is normally recommended. Like just so like that. And that little wing nut. And that is off and done. Now the next thing I'm going to do, of course, you got you have to use the check valve. So what I'm going to try to do here is the, just use some pliers and try to separate this tubing from that. I won't be able to get it on camera because of the way I have to set this up. Which basically you just pull it off just like that. It's always a good idea with these guns to have spare parts around because you never know when the check valve might get clogged and things like that. So it's a good idea to have extra check valves, have a multitude of uh, needles to deal with different viscosities of paint. Right now I've got the 1.3 and a 1.0. Probably going to experiment with the 1.0 with the clear later on on the body. I haven't exactly made up my mind on that, but uh, that is the general plan right now. But right here you see you've got the gun without that on. Now it's time to add the other system. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to 
put this cut back together with the tube and put it away. Now what I managed to acquire here, these are simply spare parts. These are replacement filters for the actual turbine system. I learned that it's a good idea to have the turbine system away from where you're painting because it does suck in the overspray. I noticed my filters had turned red by the time I had finished painting the frame uh, in the previous video. So uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to clean those filters up. They're easy to clean, but I bought some replacement filters, and this is a five pack of those check valves and the, and the long tubes for my gun. What this is, this is the adapter for the PPS uh, canister system. What this does is this converts you to be able to use the PPS canister system, and what it does is it simply goes where the paint gun was. So let's put that on. And give it a good tighten. Get it at the angle that I want, because the cool thing about this is, is you can adjust that cut to whatever angle you want. Just like that. Get it good and snug so it doesn't leak. And now we can use the cup system. Now what I've got here is this is the pressurized cup. This is what holds the liners. It's got this little uh, screw on lid here. It's got the tubing and you can see it attaches to your check valve right here. You have to have this with the turbine systems because this is a pressurized cup. So we'll put that aside for just a moment. Down here, what you'll see is I've got a box full of liners and lids and everything else for mixing your material. Very handy. And what these come with, it comes with a multitude of lids like this, which of course mount to the top of the cup. And you've also got a whole bunch of liners here for mixing material, but I'm not going to be mixing any material today, so I'll just simply put these away. But I do need one of the lids. Also included in this kit are these, which are lids that seal up the material here. So if you are uh, done painting and everything else, or you're in between painting and need to take a break, you can simply seal that up, put it upside down, because no more needing. You notice uh, when people paint with normal compressor systems, the advantage of this system is, is in the previous way, you mix up all your material in the big thing. You have to get one of those paper strainers, pour it into the cup through the strainer. Well, what this is, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it has the strainer built into the lid. So, you just simply pour your material into the cup. You know, once it's mixed up, put the lid on top of it, do your painting, and when you're done painting, you simply throw this away and use another lid. Now, one thing that's important to know about this system is, and it doesn't say this in the instructions, because you'll notice that this is the pressurized cup. This lid goes on top of it, and you'll notice this doesn't fit. Why? Well, one thing it doesn't tell you in the instructions is one thing that you have to do is you have to pop this black retainer that is normally used on non-pressurized cups off. This is not used. So you have to pop that off, throw this away. Now, put that on top of the cup, screw on your lid. I can get this adjusted here. Another thing it doesn't tell you is you have to remove this out of the lid. Then you simply screw that on. And see, when you get ready to paint, you take the lid off, put the liner in, put your paint in, put the lid on it. Of course, you've got the cap seal if you want to use it. But then when you get ready to paint, it's simply a matter of you've got your material in here, turn it upside down like so. Press down. Give it a quarter turn, and there's your new system. 
then you take your tube that comes with it, hook it up to your check valve. Just like that. And then you run this tube to your pressure cup. And of course you can trim this tube to however you see fit. But right now, since I'm just putting this together for later use, I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it alone. Now you've got a pressurized cup system just like you always do. You can adjust this. Now instead of a matter of cleanup of emptying it out, disassembling the gun, cleaning out the cup, cleaning out the gun and everything else, you just simply pull your liner out that you use your materials in, throw it away. Uh, your cup is clean and ready to use on the next time because you do throw this away and use that again or uh, use new ones again. And then all you've got to do is just assemble your gun and clean up the needle and, and all of the stuff in there and you're good to go. It really cuts down on cleanup time, makes it much easier to handle material and you have a lot less waste. You don't have to buy the strainers and all of that other stuff too. Very, very good system. I recommend it. All right, let's get to work on the coupe. Another thing I failed to mention on the minimize system, and let me show you what the turbine looks like. This is your entire paint system, right here. This generates the exact amount of air pressure you need for a high volume, low pressure system. It is lightweight. You can plug it into a 110 outlet, hook the hoses up, mix your material up in the gun that you've got, and you're ready to shoot. Much less hassle and stuff to deal with than a, than a traditional system. You saw the frame, the results speak for themselves. Very pleased with this. This is the filters that I was telling you about that I'm going to replace. They're right in here. You can see I got a little bit of red dust on them. I can clean those up and use them again, but it is a good idea to keep this system in another area. They give you enough hose. They give you about 20 feet of hose, plus I've got a six foot um, flex hose that is attached to it to add to it to lessen the weight because that flex hose I've got goes it from the hose to the gun and it's a lot less weight and it's easier to handle. The wonderful thing about this system is having that pressurized cup you can paint from any angle. You don't have to worry about keeping the cup upright, make sure it's gravity fed and everything else because it uses pressure from this system to push the, push the material down into the gun. So even painting upside down, you've got a good ample flow of material to your gun. Very, very handy. All right, what we're doing now is you have to assemble this fuel pump to fit your application. Now, According to the instructions, the first thing you do, you've got two different lines you're dealing with here. You've got a send and a return. You can't see it because I've got my uh, 6AN adapters already on this, but I, I may have to take those off in a minute. I just wanted, wanted to put them there so I didn't lose them. But this is your send. It's marked with an S, your return. According to the instructions, the first thing you have to do is you have to measure the depth of your tank from the top uh, rim all the way to the bottom of it, which my, in mine's case, it's eight and three quarter inches. So the formula for trimming the return line is you do the depth minus one inch. So if it's eight and three quarter, this has to be seven and three quarter inches. Of course, using the old standard principle of measure twice, cut once. I've got this measured now from here to here is seven and three quarter inches. Then you have to cut this at a 45 degree angle parallel to the actual uh, intake pump. So let's do that. Okay, as you can see, got this cut at a 45 degree angle, measure from the tip to the beginning. We are at seven and three quarter inches, so that's good to go. Now we've got to trim this and mount the pump up. Now the way you figure trimming this to mount the pump, which you have to have the sock on it to get the entire measurement, but this basically, according to the formula, is the depth, which is eight and three quarter, minus the pump and the sock which come to right about here because obviously the uh, hose has to fit over the top of that. Now time to do some math skills. Again, eight and three quarter inches on the pump, uh, on the depth of the tank. The pump, if you measure it, is right at four and a half. Yes, right at four four and a half. So eight and three quarter minus four and a half is four and a quarter. So this needs to be four and a quarter. 
Okay, what you do then is, is after trimming that to four and a quarter, you bolt up your tank, uh, your, your pump rather, secure it with the line, make sure that this to the bottom of your filter is the depth of your tank, which is eight and three quarter, which I have measured it, it is eight and three quarter. Then you use the supplied ties here to secure the return line to the pump and give those a trim. If I can find my cutters, here they are. Give those a trim. And assuming my measurements are correct, which is never a given, pump's ready to go in the tank. When you mount this up, look at the positioning of your tray because it's going to be uh, oriented a certain way. You want to be sure that the um, sock fits into the tank fully. Mine actually has an orientation where it's away from the fuel line, so I've got it pointed away from the fuel line or away from the return line just like that. Okay, once you get everything situated, you just tighten your bolts in a star pattern and you're good to go. You can see I've got my center and return lines right here facing out, getting ready to run my fuel lines down the length of the frame. Uh, you want to be sure you got a good seal. Now one thing about it is when you install this, the sock will tell you if you've got a good fit or not because if you got it oriented the wrong way you'll put the pump down in there and it doesn't want to fit down in there all you have to do is rotate that sock just a little bit and it sets right down in we've got an electric fuel pump installed well here we are a couple hours later about an hour and a half later let me show you what we got done on the fuel lines okay i don't have quite enough of the hardware necessary to finish the job plus i can't completely finish the job until the body is sitting on it because i have to position the uh fuel regulator, the pressure regulator, and some other things. But I wanted to give this an attempt with this kit that I bought uh, running 3 eighths uh, pressure line for uh, a high pressure fuel pump. Here you see earlier the fuel pump that we put in. 6 AN lines all the way around running the hoses out. I need to buy some more of these little clamps here to, to uh, tighten it up and some more of these to keep them together. And what I did is I just ran it in a loop because I've got to get the engine and everything in it and get everything positioned before I can finalize it. But there's the fuel filter right there. Uh, and I will secure that with a, with a clamp as well. But as you can see, not bad. Next step is to start tackling the brake lines. I hate doing brake lines. Well, we've run into a little bit of a roadblock on uh, getting the brake lines run. Uh, let me show you what I've got done and show you what the problem is. Okay, as you can see here, we've got the uh, soft lines to the brake calipers run on both sides. So that's good. I'm still working out the positioning of the rear brake uh, soft line because this is a uh, altered 9-inch housing. Normally, this hole right here is mounted on the vent tube but that is a different type of vent tube so I've got to do some recalculating there to figure out what I've got to do on it. The biggest issue is coming from this right here. Not that this is a problem. This is a brake proportioning valve. What this does is this sets the uh, bias between the front and rear brakes. As I'm sure most of you know, uh, 70 to 75 percent of your braking comes from the front brakes. So you want to have the bias set where you get more pressure to the front than the rear, so it'll brake evenly. If you have the 50/50, uh, for example, your rear brakes will lock up before your front brakes get a chance to do their job. The problem is, is I don't have a mounting bracket for it. I have located a mounting bracket that is going to basically it bolts onto these two bolts on the uh, master cylinder, and it will mount underneath which is going to stick down just a little bit on the frame, but not that big of a deal because I need to be able to see it because as you can see, it's got a uh, adjustment for the proportion valve and that uh, the wires, of course, are the uh, brake light switch. So it's a neat unit all in one, but I've got to get the mounting bracket before I can proceed. And that is why we're not doing brakes for the rest of the day. I uh, can easily get those parts in. They'll be in before my next trip down, so I'll be able to uh, run all the brakes uh, at that time. Let's keep going. We were able to mount up the rear end brake lines. Had to make myself a bracket to make my brake line, my soft line fit, but at least that's done. Since I was at a standstill on the brakes, I've begun knocking the gel coat down using 180 
this is the hard part right here. But I'm starting to get it knocked down a little bit. Still got a long way to go. The good news is, is I've already got the mold seams out. Now I've just got to get a good scuff on it so I can lay my first coat of primer. Okay, so to recap everything we've done today, I installed the new PPS 3M uh, 2.0 uh, paint uh, cup system on my paint supply system. I then uh, did the fuel lines, roughed in as much as I could up to where we are uh, going to install the fuel regulator, which can't be done until the body is put on. Got the front brake, uh, soft brake lines hooked up. Got the rear uh, differential brake lines all plumbed and ready to go up to the soft line. All I've got left to do is mount that distribution block, run my lines from the master cylinder to the distribution block, and then from the block to the front and rear brake. So that's going to be done. I also got about 40% of the sanding on the uh, body done. Just to get a good scuff on it. The plan there is next next trip up, which will be in a couple of weeks. I'll finish uh, scuffing up the body, throw down the first coat of paint, then I start doing, using the filler to uh, fix some flaws in the body to get the body work started and get the body ready to paint. Uh, I will also have acquired the necessary part uh, bracket to uh, mount up the proportioning valve. So the next trip up is body work and finishing the brakes. Thanks for joining us. Please hit like and subscribe and feel free to comment if you have any questions or have any input. We'll talk to you next time.